This is a project a year in the making. 2023, the weather pushed the mercury to single digits Fahrenheit. This was the first time I experienced this scrotum tucking temperature. I lost hot water in three of the bathrooms, triggering maintenance. Freezing pipes is great for a plumber, but not for living. Before I tell you about my adventure in the dark, cold, tight part of the house, I welcome you. A journey of home renovation and maintenance. Welcome to Maintaining 18. I'm installing a heating cable to prevent the pipe carrying hot water from freezing. The cold water pipe did not freeze. Beginning with a test. In my case, the heating cable was in the attic and got cold. So when I plugged it in, it illuminated at both ends, confirming it is working as expected. I recommend placing the heating cable in the freezer for a time, maybe 20 minutes, then plug it in to confirm it's working. Using ice to get the thermostat cold did not work well for me. And for the most part, that is exposing a portion of the cable to cold temperatures. As usual, there's work to be done before the actual solution is put in place. The architecture this time is to install an outlet near the water pipes. I ran an extension from the GFCI outlet used to test the heating cable. Before I begin, I'm looking at the pipes using a thermal imager. One pipe showed up clearly. It will be a bad idea to film, so step outside to experience the cold showers the family will be facing. Talk about motivation to get this done. This is the setup in the attic. There are two pipes and they are insulated just as installed by the plumber. I'll have a bucket. That's where my tools will be. I typically wear gloves to protect my hands and these blue Smurf gloves are typically what I use because I find them cost effective. However, they are not gonna be suitable in this type of work. And the reason for that is I have to do fine detail work such as um, peeling back tape. In addition, you have the insulation which gets stuck to the gloves and then transfers onto the tape, making them less effective. So I'll be using these general latex type gloves. Okay, so in the attic, this is what I will do. Reach into my bucket for a tool. In this case, I'm looking for the utility knife. And the reason for that is to open the insulation, which will be sealed. Once open, I'll remove the insulation from the pipe. It's early yet, but having worked in the attic in sub-zero temperatures, after a while your fingers really begin to feel like it's freezing. And that will slow you down a bit and it also calls fine motor work with the fingers to be difficult. I'm using the cord on this oscillating tool to simulate the heating cable. The oscillating tool itself is good to simulate the coil of heating cable. Once again, reach into my bucket, grab my rag, and I clean the cable. The cable will get very dusty, especially with the insulation I'm using in the attic, which is blowing insulation. On occasion, I'll also have to clean the pipe. For the most part, it comes out the insulation pretty clean. However, in some cases, it will touch the insulation and get dusty, which will prevent the tape from adhering properly. The installation process advances with attaching the heating cable to the pipe. The first step is to stretch the heating tape cable along the pipe. In practice, the attachment process is much easier. The heating cable came with a specific tape to use along the pipe to attach the cable to the pipe. I ran out of that one pretty fast. So I'm using foil tape. It's pretty sticky, which is good. However, it can be difficult to work with because it's in a bigger pile. So wrapping around the cable like this is often not possible. Typically, I have to cut smaller strips of the tape. Now, you want the heating tape as flat as possible to the pipe. When there's a gap, then I have to use an extra piece of tape to secure it. Ideally, you'll tape within six inch intervals. Now, the good thing is that 
once you have the tape at the beginning you can stretch the heating cable to have it remain flat along the pipe it's easier to do in practice than in the simulated environment because there's nothing holding the pipe firm so when you pull on the pipe the whole thing goes yes it's a mess there's more of this fine motor work now the heating cable at this point is attached to the pipe this particular application of foil tape and this is very important that it's um, paper backed is to spread or increase the thermal effect so it basically spreads or dispenses the heat out along a larger portion of the pipe this is much easier in practice because the pipe doesn't move or shift around also I have to be holding the pipe which will not be necessary when I'm actually in the environment in the attic that is installing the heating cable considering dust the paper backed foil tape is the way to go for better smoother installation the process is further advanced with insulation pipe insulation now some installers use foil faced insulation but this is not good for thermal tracing I'm able to use a thermal camera to see what is taking place with the heating tape and the entire assembly however if there is foil over the pipes then the use of thermal tracing will not be possible with the pipe insulation installed I next need to close the seam in order to do that I will take some tape hold the insulation closed and wrap it around here I'm using foil tape however in practice I use it very sparingly I use it when there is a lot of dust on the insulation itself typically I will just use duct tape I do just as I did before cut the duct tape squeeze the insulation together to close the seam and then wrap it around the pipe insulation now once it's in place I can easily close the seam over with more duct tape but I don't have to hold it closed all I need to do is stretch it along cut it and press it in place and that is it so this is how I go about installing the heating cable. Ta da! A final note I used a couple of brands of duct tape. This one is unmarked. It's not as great as the marked version that I was using before. Details are in the description. Whoa, we're back in the attic. Before I plug in the heating cable, I need to test the outlet to make sure it is wired correctly. It would be a shame to get this far and then by electrical malfunction, poof, the work is gone. It's time to plug in the heating cable. The attic at this point is very cold, I think in the teens. So once I plug the cable in, it illuminates at the plug and there we go that green light that means that the key heating cable is on and actively heating so you can see it better I'll dim the light there you go so this installation is indeed a success now that the heating cable is put in operation I'm doing a bit of thermal tracing the idea here is to see how the heat is being dispensed. I'm looking for an even dispensation of heat right throughout the pipe. For the most part, I've been consistent in the way the heating cable was installed, so this should not be a problem. It's very difficult to see because of the reflections on the screen, but it's slowly heating up. And the heat is disseminated in an even way there is something additional something which cannot easily be shown I do have excess heat cable about maybe six to ten feet or so 
what I have done is I have placed it in a bunch and I tried to spread it out a bit evenly along the pipe. This is along an area of the pipe which I cannot get to because it goes down into the wall. Some final thoughts. This is a physically challenging project. The thermostat for the heat cable was not attached to the pipe. It is exposed to open air by hanging from the rafters. Foiled backed insulation prevents thermal tracing. Also, it would warrant replacing the insulation, and in my case, that would be 15 hours at McDonald's. Be smart about it. Working in the attic is a workout with Hulk Hogan, so if you attempt this, pop some low-dose aspirin and prepare to get even closer to a knee replacement. The aspirin is not much for the pain, but more to avoid a heart attack and having emergency services cut a hole in the roof to pull out the DI wire. Then guess what? You have more maintenance waiting, and if you have United Healthcare, aya! What would I do differently? Golden Judge considered the matter. The heat tape was 120 feet in length. I would use two instead. This way, it's a one way boot camp. One last thought. This is about working in the attic. There may be nails in the joists, so prepare to remove them. Knee pads do help, however bulky ones do not help. I ended up using insulation for knee pads. A mask is definitely not optional. A two gallon bucket and a trash bag are preferable. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. The day is one.